Major funding for this project has been made possible by the Kirkpatrick Family Fund, the Oklahoma Humanities Council, and the National Endowment for the Humanities. house was like walking into a magical land, castle and all. The polished stairway, gleaming chandeliers, and paintings were like something out of a storybook. It was a fairy land. Margaret Brewington Smith, family friend. Every great city needs great cultural institutions, museums for art, museums for history, but we also need historic homes. The Overholzer Mansion is Oklahoma's greatest historic home. For over 100 years, the Overholzer Mansion has been an architectural and historic landmark. The house was constructed for one of Oklahoma City's earliest leading families, the Henry Overholzers. It is rare to have a home that's more than 100 years old that has the original furniture in the original location, the original carpets, the original paints that have not been painted over or plastered over. This has not been restored. This is as it probably looked when Mrs. Overholzer passed away. That is very rare in an urban setting. Built in an open field in 1903, the splendid house was the personification of culture and refinement. Opened with all due pomp and circumstance in 1904 and occupied for almost 70 years by two generations of the Oberholzer family, the home was a society showpiece for decades. Beginning in the 1970s, the house was open to the public as a museum, a role that it continues at the present time. An architectural marvel, the house is the only remaining tangible connection to a family that had a tremendous impact on the development of Oklahoma City and accordingly the state of Oklahoma. This home reflects Henry Overholzer's life, a 19th century businessman who brought a city into the 20th century. He came onto the stage of history at the right time to help Oklahoma City grow. He left an impact on the city his name is universally known because of places named after him. A successful businessman in his early 40s at the time, Mr. Overholzer became involved in a myriad of town building activities that ensured the successful growth of the community. Responsible for the construction of a number of buildings in Oklahoma City, including the Grand Avenue Hotel and Overholzer Opera House, Mr. Overholzer continued to be a force in local politics and commerce for more than 20 years. He was so well respected that city and county offices closed on the afternoon of his funeral service. Coming to Oklahoma City shortly after the 1889 land run, Anna Ione Murphy joined her parents in their apartment in one of Mr. Overholzer's new buildings. Marrying Mr. Overholzer in October 1889, the 18-year-old rapidly assumed the role of society matron. One of Mrs. Overholzer's most notable acts of kindness was lending her linens to Oklahoma City newcomers at a time when linens were a critical symbol of refinement. After more than a decade of living in their Grand Avenue Hotel in downtown Oklahoma City, the Overholzers moved into their magnificent chateauesque three-story brick house in late 1903. Their opulent house, which included hand-painted canvas walls and the finest in furnishings, clearly demonstrated the Overholzer's standing in the community as civic and society leaders, as well as their aspirations for Oklahoma City to become a major city in the future state. Reportedly, Mr. Overholzer's chief purpose in building such a resplendent home was to encourage others to outdo him, a method of town betterment he used before to make Oklahoma City the center of culture in Oklahoma. The subsequent development of the surrounding neighborhood, now called Heritage Hills, and filled with a number of majestic homes, is visible proof of Mr. Overholzer's wisdom. Designed by the Oklahoma City architectural firm of Matthews and Rice, the Overholzer Mansion is a rare, excellent Oklahoma example of the Chateauesque style. 
This style, nationally popular from about 1880 to 1910, was typically used only on expansive, architect-designed landmark houses. The exterior of the three-story yellow brick house, ornamented with brown-cut stonework, features a ceramic tile-hipped roof, multiple-shaped chimneys, six gable dormers, a corner tower topped by a pinnacle, a one-story wraparound porch, and a side pork cochere. To the rear of the property, a two-story brick carriage house was built, necessary to hold the overholster's horse-drawn conveyances and provide additional quarters for the help. Careful attention was paid to the interior of the house. As noted in the local newspaper in 1904, quote, the taste with which the house has been decorated and is being furnished is flawless and shows a praiseworthy mastery of the subject. And the whole overholster house is an incomparable example of the possibilities of beautiful home building. The first floor was designed for turn of the 20th century entertaining. Henry Overholzer is the father of Oklahoma City. And because of his prominence and his wife's prominence in the community, this became the party place. And it was a very formalized, structured social system in Oklahoma City. This family, this home, was right in the middle of that social system. The public rooms of the house included a reception hall with an alcove for seating unexpected guests a parlor, a music room, a library, and a fine dining room, which was described in 1904 as one of the most artistic rooms in the house, with its green-tinted walls and ceiling and hand-painted glass transom in a grape design. The halls, library, and dining room were all furnished with the finest selected Antwerp oak from Belgium, while the drawing and music rooms were ivory wood and the bedrooms done in natural mahogany and oak. Although less visible, the rear hall, butler's pantry, kitchen, storerooms, and linen closets were modern and models of convenience in 1904. The second floor, containing the private rooms of the family, underwent more change to accommodate modern needs, such as the master bedroom redone in the 1950s by interior decorator Kenneth Fruit. At the time, the Overholster's only living child, Henry Ione, and her husband, David J. Perry, occupied the house. Born on March 13, 1905, and named for both of her parents, Henry Ione Overholzer was the second child born to Henry and Anna Overholzer. Henry Samuel Overholzer, born in January 1891, survived only eight months. Attending local schools through the eighth grade, Henry Ione Overholzer completed her education at Oaksmere, a girls' school in Memoronic, New York. Following her graduation, Henry Ione assumed duties expected of a woman of her class in the 19th 1920s. In June 1926, she became Mrs. David J. Perry. Upon her marriage, the new Mrs. Perry took part in her husband's passions, aviation and horses. Her own interests led her to become an avid gardener, even raising a victory garden during World War II. Following their marriage and for several years following, the Perrys lived in the house with Mrs. Overholzer from mid-1940 until Mrs. Perry's death in 1959. Throughout their occupation of the house, Mrs. Perry spent time each day ensuring that the entertaining rooms retained their original period elegance. She was, in effect, the first curator of the Overholzer Mansion. During his solo tenure in the house, Mr. Perry made notable modifications to just one room. In 1966, Mr. Perry renovated the kitchen, including the installation of cabinets and a modern range. Bending to his cook's desires, Mr. Perry left the original 1903 Detroit Jewel wood-burning stove. Mr. Perry sold the house and furnishings in 1972 to several nonprofit and private organizations. In turn, they gave it to the state of Oklahoma and opened it as a historic house museum. When people come to the Overholzer Mansion, I hope they go away understanding the influence of Henry Overholzer. I want them to leave not just understanding great architecture, and an incredible collection of furniture and art that represents the time. But I want them to understand the bigger picture of what Henry Overholzer meant in the life of one community. Like all significant resources, the Overholzer Mansion requires constant care. Currently, the house is owned by the Oklahoma Historical Society and is operated by the statewide nonprofit preservation organization, Preservation Oklahoma Incorporated. 
we have got to make a major investment at this time if we are going to save this facility. If we're going to preserve it and then share it. We have a golden opportunity right now with this, with this new age of development in Oklahoma City. If we can achieve the preservation of this mansion in the next two to three years, I think it will serve this community for the next 100. And so the second 100 years of the Overholster's history will be just as significant in this community as it was for the first 100 years.